today at Charlie's Foreign Car, we have a beautiful 89 911, and it has the infamous odometer failure. So the speed, I've already removed the speedometer from this car. The speedometer works great, but the odometer stopped counting up the miles. So we're gonna take this thing apart and see what's wrong with it inside. We're gonna take the speedometer apart, find which gears went bad, and replace the gears that are bad. Uh, we're gonna gently uh, pry this rear ring off. Uh, we wanna make sure that we do not scratch anywhere in this vicinity. Uh, this, is a, this is the trickiest process, part of the job. This is a press fit into the dash, right? So the rubber ring just holds this into the dash and it just butts up right against this back piece. So you do not want to take a screwdriver and start prying outward or doing any of that. All you're trying to do is this flange is folded over right here. You're just trying to open up that flange and then it'll eventually just come off. I have made a special component that then recrimps that flange all the way around on some Porsche IMS bearings, which is pretty cool. I'll show you guys that in a minute. Uh, but in the meanwhile, we are just going to gently pop this guy off of here. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna work it all the way around, just like this. Be careful, do not damage. Don't eat into this too much. It takes a lot of force to open this flange up. You do not pry up against this thing and lift it off. Do not do that. You're just, you're walking all the way around it, just like this, slowly but surely. Do not rush this process. This is the part where you wanna just kinda let it take a good 15 to 20 minutes just pulling this bezel off. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I am just uncrimping the bezel. So you can see right there, it's just, we're just uncrimping it. We're not popping this thing off ever. And you can use whatever tool you can get underneath there. First, you gotta start with a small screwdriver, a big screwdriver, a pick, whichever. You kinda, some of them, some of these have already been apart before. And there's a really good chance that they were not recrimped. Uh, how I'm gonna recrimp them back to factory. When we're done with this, it's gonna look just like factory from the front. You will not be able to tell anything ever happened. Well, we're getting close. Now, there is a certain point where you might be able to kind of just pop this guy off here. You wanna make sure you don't put too much pressure on the front plexi. Ha, and here we are. We have this piece off finally. Okay, so we're gonna put that guy there. So this comes off in a couple different pieces. We have this trim ring and this trim ring. And they both are gonna lay right there. Um, then we have, then our front glass or plexiglass can come out. See that? Just plexiglass. We're gonna make sure that we wipe this down. We're not gonna use any cleaner on it. Don't use any Windex or anything with alcohol in it. Just use a brand new clean microfiber. Don't use a paper towel. Don't use any of that. There's uh, the paper towel is cotton paper towels more harsh than this microfiber. So I'll get a brand new microfiber out for that and I will clean it. Now there's this trim ring as well. It's gonna come out just nice like that. So you can see there's multiple trim rings here. Now we have to take and remove the needle. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna mark uh, where that needle is pointing right now with a Sharpie. I'm going to remove the needle Right now I'm gonna stop and wash my hands, not just because of COVID-19, 
but because uh, if when I grab and touch this needle, I don't want any grease or anything from my fingers to get onto that needle. The orange is in very good condition. Uh, it's very, if you were to get that dirty, you'd have a difficult time cleaning it and keeping the nice, like it looks like it's freshly painted bright orange. Obviously this car is garaged. The needle's not sun bleached. So we're gonna keep it very, very clean. So we're gonna mark uh, where nobody's gonna ever be able to see unless somebody takes this apart again on the inside of this barrel. All right, that's just right exactly where that needle's pointing. And now we are going to remove the needle. The, the needle has an internal stop right there, see? See how it comes down and stops? Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn past the stop and then we're gonna turn past the stop on this side and we're gonna break the needle free. And we're gonna turn past the stop on this side and break it free again. And you can see the force that I'm using, I'm only using finger pressure underneath there, just slightly, just grabbing it and pulling it straight off against each stop, you know, left to right. If you use a tool to pry up underneath here, like a fork or a spoon or a screwdriver or a pick or any or a plastic wedge or anything, you will break the motor that spins that speedometer needle and you will have a speedometer that's now broken. So we just wanna be very careful back and forth. Usually they come off by now. This one just wants to be stuck on there. I'm just gently pulling up with my fingers underneath it. Just get it nice and loosened up. There it is. So the, the you can see, that, can you see that little needle in there? That's what spins the speedometer needle. Okay, so I'm gonna put that guy down gently, just like that. And now we're ready for the next step. We're gonna remove the face plate now. Face plate screws. Now the face plate should just come off. We're gonna make sure we don't touch it too much. Now the face plate should just come off. We're gonna make sure we don't touch it too much. Just like so. And now at this point, we are going to, from the back, we're gonna remove these screws. Uh, this, these screws have never been removed just because I don't want this touching anything else. I, I don't want this to come into contact like that with the ground like that. So I'm gonna hold it to prevent it from, from that happening. Okay, and also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark, so those screws went in in a certain way just like that. I'm going to mark the same one that I used for the Speedo needle. And I'm gonna just gonna mark this guy to line up with that Speedo needle. Again, you can't see any of these marks that I'm putting on here. We wanna make sure that we don't touch any of these. Uh, if you put a grease smudge on there or anything, uh, these numbers are visually seen, the numbers are. Okay, so then, I'll we'll just flip that guy through there. Yep. I want to make sure we don't damage any solder joints or connections or anything. At this point, we might be able to just leave all that stuff just like that. And we're going to have to be able to properly reassemble that. Uh, so what we're looking at here, as you can see, our one failed tooth here becomes very apparent. See right in here, see this worm gear? This is, a, this is an electric motor. Here's a worm gear. And see how that tooth has, is missing right there? So what's happening is, is as this is turning, as this is spinning, it stopped advancing this which turns the mileage. Okay, and what you definitely do not want to do, and so if we, if we kind of want to check the rest of the gearing, 
We could spin this guy. Oh look, these guys are just coming apart. See that, they're coming apart my finger. Those are the gears, those are the bad gears. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that gear and then we're gonna inspect the gear right behind it. I'm going to go ahead and remove this gear stack from the motor. So you can see the inner workings of the speedometer motor right here and then the odometer motor right here. Um, so now we can kind of separate these guys. You want to be very careful with all this stuff. Very small, little tiny solder joints. Be very careful with all of it. Don't pull or push on any of it. Now we can focus on these stacks of gears. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we, if we did turn this guy, that it does advance the the odometer so see that it advances the odometer that's good the odometer is advancing okay good so all that's working so now what we're going to do is pop this pin out we're going to remove uh, these three gears this one this one and this one we're only going to replace this one we're first going to remove this one and the way you do it is you pop this little pin out so we're gonna just press that pin straight out. See how it's already coming out right there. And now be very careful. Okay, that comes out. That's gonna lift straight out like that. Make sure you do not move the gears too much. That goes straight down like that. Now we're going to remove this gear right here by popping this clip off. So we're going to get in there with a, possibly this pick and just give it a little tiny pry. This is all this stuff is plastic inside here, so be very careful with it. It will just come apart and you're popping a metal piece off of here. So uh, this can also go flying across the room. So just be careful because you don't want to touch the numbers, like I said. And the numbers are now exposed on the back and on the front. So it's tricky, right? You don't want to touch the numbers anywhere. There we go. Here goes that one. Now this gear comes off. It's gonna go right back on like that. Now we've got this gear, this clip. That clip comes off just like that. Now we're gonna remove this very broken gear. What we wanna make sure of is that as we grab this gear, it's going to crumble apart even more. Do not allow the crumbs to fall into this section. So tip it down this way. And that piece just came apart. You can see how it kind of melted on there. It's real gooey. We are not going to put the brand new gear back onto that gooey stack, right? We're just gonna wipe that off. Get it nice and fresh clean. And we're gonna use a little tiny bit of solvent because it's still kinda, if I grab onto it, it's still kinda sticky and it's still like a little grimy right there. All right, that's about as clean as we're gonna get it. We're not going for cleaner than that. We're not gonna use anything more abrasive than that on it. We're gonna make sure that when we reinstall this gear and pop this gear back on there, that it does spin nicely. So the motor can spin it well. That spins nice, I like that. We're now going to clip the E-clip back on. Just like that, make sure that guy's seated in there. Perfect. 
Now we're just going to make sure that we this side is clean. You know, this side went on just like this, right? Um, we want to make sure that there's no uh, little tiny bits or parts that when that gear has been disintegrating for the last 30 years, that they didn't fall into this gear, damage this gear. This gear looks good. Uh, Jeff at Odometer Gears uh, said that I don't need to replace this gear. I don't think he makes this gear, which means that this gear never breaks. Jeff over there at Odometer Gears nobody's, knows what he's talking about. So we're gonna set that guy right back on there like that. That's how we removed it. It's gonna interlock with that gear. We are then going to put this clip back on there. Just like that. Okay, you can see that gear spins that. That one spins that one. Cool. All right, now for the last and final gear. Uh, if it, While I'm looking in here, you see that little tiny chunk right there that's sitting right there? It's very important to clean that out right now and get that chunk out. See that chunk right there? If that chunk falls into any of this area, the odometer will stop working. So now we're gonna line this guy back up like so. That, that, and that. That goes in like that. Our axle that we removed, go in like so. And we're just gonna wiggle this guy up and down like so. Press that in like that. And it just wants to be forced in a teeny tiny bit. We wanna be very careful. We don't wanna to touch the back of those gears at all with anything. And I just press that in with my fingernail, right? So that delicate piece is all back together. So now we are advancing this now. And the odometer will work as long as that electric motor works. So you can see how this whole thing kind of comes together. You've got the speedometer assembly, right? So here's, here's the speedometer and here's the odometer. They're just stacked on top of each other, right? One's completely separate of the other. You can remove this assembly, take your needle, put the needle back on there, and then your Speedo would still work, right? It'd be missing this piece. So this, these two pieces are completely separate. And we're gonna just gently set that down right in the center. That's it. Just like that. This guy went on the outside edge right here, just like that. And we're just gonna screw all these pieces back together. Okay, so now what we want to do before we do final assembly back in, we want to take this motor right here and we want to kind of hand spin it. And we want to make sure that everything is still advancing. Okay, and yes it is, it's still advancing. There's an infamous 60 minutes story uh, about how back in the 80s, the uh, used car dealers would buy cars and then they'd roll back the miles, right? So talk about rolling back the miles. So you could, I'm not saying that I ever would, you could roll back the miles with a screwdriver or you could reverse this thing, right? And see how the miles are going backwards now? I'm going, go, watch this one, it's going from zero to nine, you know, 0.9 to 0.8 and everything's going in reverse. There might be a special clutch on here that doesn't allow the main one to actually reverse, but on older cars, they didn't know better, so they didn't make them with special clutches to do that. 
Uh, anyways, they would take these things apart and they'd roll the numbers back and do all kinds of bad stuff. Um, definitely do not do that. It's illegal. It's illegal to touch any of those to, to advance to advance to retard any of those numbers. Um, to be honest, I don't even know if it's illegal to advance them. I'm just doing it to inspect it. So I'm only putting uh, 0.1 miles on the car, or actually maybe one putting 1.0 miles on the car. Make sure that the odometer still works. Uh, the rule was a, a rule when people were taking tens of thousands of miles off cars, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 100,000 miles off of a car. It really had 250,000 and they sold it with 75,000. So in today's cars, you can't really do that because everything's all digital and to access any of that stuff, you have to have special keys and information and the mileage is stored in multiple computers within the car. So you can't change it in one without four other computers knowing about it. And if you tried, it's, it's basically, they basically made it almost impossible to do it today uh, on today's cars. On yesteryear's cars, it was just as simple as just taking this thing apart and messing with a screwdriver and going up and down. Don't do that. Here's the bad gear. That gear was the bad one. That was the culprit. There was just one. There was, I think, two teeth missing, and then I touched these, and then those two broke off, and you can see, let's see how this tooth is. Like, see these three teeth right here? Just kind of push on them while they break off. Yeah, they just break right off. See them? They're just totally disintegrating off. So I could take all the teeth and just kind of break them all off. Look at that. So that's how old the gear is. All that happens is just one tooth breaks off and then it stops It stops right there in the tooth. It can't, can't advance through it. So then they just sit there. So it's like, you know, which one's gonna break first? Who knows? Now we're gonna put this can back together. I'm gonna recrimp it. Show you guys my other cool tool. We're going to clean that with a fresh microfiber. Everything gets just nicely wiped down. Don't use any chemical. Do not use Windex. If you have to scrub on it, I would recommend dampening this with water and that's it. Do not use anything else. You'll just wipe the numbers right off. Okay, so that looks nice right there. Nice and clean looks, I mean, shoot, it looks brand new almost. So that's good. I'm gonna drop that guy. Oh, we're gonna also make sure uh, that our odometer clears and resets with our push button right now. So does that happen? Yes, it does. That works. Make sure that we do not touch that speedo needle. So see the speedo needle? The thing is very, very fragile. And we're just gonna center that guy just like so, right there. And then those two little tiny baby screws go in there. And it's only gonna stop right there. So those screws, unfortunately, that, that's, how they, that's how it came apart. Uh, one's gonna be pointed that direction and one's gonna be pointed that direction. Kind of bugs me a little bit, but what are you gonna do? We have these five last components. The next one is the needle. So I'm just gonna wipe my hands off again. I'm not even gonna re-wipe this area because if I brush over the, the speedometer needle right now with this, I can break that needle off. So that's why I cleaned it before. And what we're gonna do is just kind of set this guy right back on there, right back on that needle. Just like that. We're gonna give it a little tiny push. And it's on there. Okay, now you can see where it's resting. Right now it's resting at 20 miles an hour. And it goes back to 20. So I had it pointed at that little mark I put in there, right? So 
I'm going to move it to the mark. So we can see that we are right on that mark right now. Look straight down that mark that I put in there. That's perfect. So I'm just going to give that a little tiny push. And that's it. That needle's on. Now, the next component is this piece. All this is just going to get wiped down with the, the actually first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first wipe the, the plexi down. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I don't abrade it too hard. I'm not going to wipe this thing super hard. I'm just trying to get it really clean. Just kind of polished clean. Again, I'm not going to use anything on this as far as a chemical. No chemicals. A couple little smudges. I can't tell if they're on the inside or the outside. And you know, they're 30 years old, so I just want to make sure they're clean. This bezel is going to pop into here just like this. Kind of sits down just like that. It, it clocks itself, this little, this little guy right here clocks itself with this and this. So it kind of just falls right into position. Perfect. Then we're gonna in, install our glass. Our glass kind of also falls, these little tabs line up right there. Also, our push button is gonna go right through there. Top and bottom, just like that. Then we have our inner trim ring. Inner trim ring sits on here like that. The outer trim ring goes on. Uh, there is a couple of little tiny scratches that I saw before and they were in toward the top. I'm actually going to move them down here to the bottom where it might be less visible for the customer. There's all that. So this is all going to just go right back over the top, right? And we're just going to help it out. It's very flimsy, so we don't want to force it too hard. Um, if we want to use a little pry to get up over the lip, that might help. There goes that one. Just make sure you do not, um, you know, don't put too much force on this guy. It's not. It's not going to work well. Uh, the inner bezel ring could also not be seated fully, so you just kind of want to push that guy around until it seats properly. So you have the inner trim ring set. You see how those two pieces go together. They, they're meant to look like one piece, but it's really two pieces, right? So this piece right here is different than this piece on this side. And you can see where it becomes unseated away from there because it's not seated back here. It's kind of like putting a tire on. And again, we just want to be nice and careful with it. And sometimes even just a really sharp pick. See that's starting to go right there. It's getting very close. It's, it's some very tedious work. But there it is. You can see now that that piece all the way around there, those two pieces that there were, now look like one piece. Okay. And now for the trick, right? How do you how do you recrimp that all so that piece stays pulled down against the glass and all four that basically you have 
the outer trim ring, the inner trim ring above the, the glass, the glass, and then the lower trim ring. So you have four pieces. They're all sandwiched in by how you're gonna recrimp this edge now. So now I'm gonna get my cool tool out. So the importance of crimping this piece down, I had this made. Um, this is a tool that is going to crimp this edge. I'm gonna show you guys. Um, this is a piece of PVC that we machined out to fit this guy perfect. Okay, see that? So see how that bevel is just above there right now? So that's the perfect size and height. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it into here and we're gonna be, we're gonna be allowed to roll it and all these heights are set up just right so nothing's gonna to be touching. So, you know, this, the face or anything is gonna be scratched or anything. These are, IM, these are Porsche IMS bearings that we've removed, good ones. And then same thing down over here. And so what we're gonna do is just kinda of hold this guy down tight against those two IMS bearings. And we're gonna bring this crimping edge in over here. We're just gonna push that crimp over as we spin it. And we're gonna go all the way around a couple different times. We're gonna push that in. And there we go. We're gonna start feeding that guy. And then now that is fully crimped back in there. And it's pulled nice and tight. Pull that guy out, perfect. No damages to this outer edge. Clean that guy all up, just like that. You can see that back edge is crimped down, all nice, all the way back down around there, nice and crimped. It's holding, that little crimp right there that I just did is holding all that stuff together. It's holding everything together. So now we're just gonna put it back in the car and test it. So, looks like brand new again.